Howdy, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries, amen, okay, got a good one for you today, understanding New Jerusalem, listen, there's a lot of confusion about that, uh, about what is New Jerusalem, who is New Jerusalem, is it Israel, is it the body of Christ, uh, is, it a, is it just a city, a uh, What's going on with this New Jerusalem thing? So, uh, I listen, it's not really hard to understand. What's hard is believing. Amen? See, that's the problem we have when we come to the Word of God, is we'll read something, and we're like, no, nah, it can't be that. Because uh, like Dr. Ruckman used to say, man, hey, some of that stuff is wild, man. It's wild. And if you don't have faith in God and 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 believe every single word of his book and just Give God the benefit of the doubt. Take God's word at face value and just believe what he said. Kind of it, it kind of opens up and, and becomes pretty clear. Uh, what happens is when we don't believe it, then we'll tend to mush a bunch of stuff together and underdivide, or we'll come over and start separating a bunch of stuff that shouldn't be separated, and we'll begin to overdivide, where the scripture tells us to rightly divide. And generally, that if you just come with a childlike faith, and just believe exactly what God says, and just accept it, uh, it it's, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Uh, we find that most of our problems, you know, aren't, my, aren't, aren't head problems, they're heart problems, and it's an evil spirit of unbelief. Amen? So let's look at uh, this subject today of understanding New Jerusalem. Uh, but let's pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed old book, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. Lord, just by your Holy Spirit, open up the words of this book. Illuminate our minds that we might understand what you have to say here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Okay, well, I think that in understanding New Jerusalem, first of all, let's rightly divide and understand Old Jerusalem. Okay, so go with me, if you will, to Isaiah and chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, and uh, we'll read verses 2 through 4. Prophecy concerning the nation of Israel and earthly Jerusalem. Chapter 2, and it shall, in verse 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. This is the promise to the nation of Israel about their kingdom. Hallelujah. Their kingdom with the son of David sitting on the throne of David in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning this earth. And that's an unconditional covenant and promise from a God who cannot lie that he never took, took back replacement theology saying God is all done with the nation of Israel is a demonic false doctrine. Don't get caught up in that. And you'll find that involved in covenant theology as well and Calvinism. And it's wrong, wrong, wrong. God is not done with this nation of Israel and he will fulfill literally every promise in this blessed book to them. Amen. So, concerning that kingdom to come, look at uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah 
Zechariah in chapter 8. And uh, let's look at verse 23. During that time, thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Yes, he's right there. He's on the throne of David in Jerusalem. Amen. See, the, the nation of Israel was to be a kingdom of priests that would represent the, the, the king of kings uh, from, from his throne in Jerusalem, and all nations would come to Israel for the knowledge of God. And uh, that, that is still to come. That's old Jerusalem. That's the old Jerusalem program for the nation of Israel, for the Jewish people, all right? So now we've rightly divided old Jerusalem and all the prophetic information right there of what the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, their kingdom here on this earth, the kingdom of heaven, amen. Now, the heaven, that's the literal, physical, visible creations. Heaven and God are two different things. God made heaven. So you see, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, that's different. The kingdom of God is the spiritual rule and reign of God. The kingdom of heaven is the literal, physical, visible heavens that he created. Amen. All right. So going on here, we realize that this promised kingdom was rejected by the Jewish people. Amen. Christ came. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Your king is here, right? Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. He's right. He's, he's riding into Jerusalem. We're throwing down our palm leaves. He's here. He's here. And what? A few days later, they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. And they commit deicide and regicide. They kill their king and their God. Amen. So then along come the apostles after, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Then the, the apostles come to the nation of Israel. And again, the nation of Israel rejects the king and the kingdom and the gospel of grace. And so what happens? We go to uh, look at Romans chapter 28. Romans chapter 28. All right, let's go to verse uh, 25. Right here at the end of the book. Oh, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 28. I wrote down the wrong verse. Acts chapter 28. Verse 25. Paul is in Rome. He has already kicked the dust off his feet, washed, washed his hands of them, of the Jews in Asia and the Jews in Europe, and now, and now he's in Rome. All roads lead to Rome, representing all the world. So, representing the Jews of all the world in Rome, Paul speaks to the Jews. He gives them their last chance, the message of Christ. And here's what happens. Verse 25, And when they agreed not amongst themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Here's what Paul said. Here's his one word. Well spoke the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known 
Therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent to the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Okay? So, we know after this, seven years later, Titus of Rome marches his, his legions down and guess what? <laughs> there ain't no more old Jerusalem. Titus flattens that thing. He fulfills the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. There shall not one stone be left upon another. That's the end. That's it. That's, that's the fall of Israel. But, see, God had another thing in the works. You know, this, this rejection of the message, the rejection of the king and the kingdom by the nation of Israel did not catch God by surprise. If you don't know, God is already in tomorrow. Amen. So God had another program waiting in the wings, if you will, to be revealed. Go with me, if you will, to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. The new program. Now re remember, this is the Apostle John. This is the Apostle John who was the disciple that Jesus loved. He was the one that leaned upon his breast at the Last Supper. He is the one in the book of Revelation that represents the body of Christ and has said, Come up hither. This is John. This is John writing around 90 A.D., long after the full revelation of the gospel of grace. John is writing here to the body of Christ, which was a mystery at the time when he wrote it. But now we understand who he was talking to. Look, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Where, is he going to Jerusalem here on earth? No, 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 no. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus Christ said, I'm going. Israel has, Israel has rejected me. I am going to prepare a place for you, body of Christ. I am going to prepare a place, and I will come and get you and take you to that place that you may be with me. Amen? That's what he said. That's what he said. So this is a new program coming in here. And in this new program, the middle wall, the Bible says, the middle wall of partition is taken down. There is no longer Jew or Gentile. Everyone is placed on an equal footing before God. No more Jew, no more Gentile. We all become one in the body of Christ. And we are a heavenly people, not an earthly people. We are a spiritual people heavenly people that go to be with him in heaven absent from the body present from the present with the lord we go to heaven to be with christ and where do we go we go to new jerusalem that is the place he went to prepare for us and think how amazing that place is man <laughs> he's been preparing that place for 2000 years man that's hey that's going to be that's going to be a good spot. That's going to be a good spot. Amen. So he tells us more about this mystery in look at uh 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to be we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 a couple times. Very pertinent to the subject is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 often called the resurrection chapter. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, let's look at about uh, verse uh, ah, 51, 52. Here's what, here's what Paul says. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed. Okay? So, this is something new. A mystery is something not yet revealed. Right? The church, which is his body, Jew and Gentile, in one heavenly organism, that was a mystery because it is not revealed until the Pauline epistles. This was something not understood or known. It was hid from them in the Old Testament. But now, now it is revealed. It is a mystery. It is something new. So when he says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. He's not talking about the resurrection of Israel, because as we'll see in a minute, that was completely revealed, that was fully understood. He's revealing a mystery. This is something new. This is concerning the mystery. This is concerning the rapture of the body of Christ. He says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. This isn't the last trump in the book of Revelation. This, we're, this is a church age epistle. We're talking about church age events. This is the last trump signaling the end of the church age and the rapture of the body of Christ. He said, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen? So, this is the rapture of the body of Christ, and where we are what? Well, let's, let's, let's read some more about that. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So, we are raised incorruptible. We are raised with new bodies. Now, where do we go? Where do we go? 1 Corinthians, I mean, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Those, those that have died in faith. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And here you go. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Huh? So now we put all that together where we get in, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where with, we, it's a mystery where we get this new body, and over in John, where he says he went to prepare a place for us, that where he is, uh, that there, there we may be also, and we see here, he's going to come, he's going to take us up in the clouds, that we, what? We shall, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen? So that is, go to Revelation chapter 19. That is our destiny as members of the body of Christ, as members of this heavenly organism, we dwell in the heavenlies with him. In that place, he went to prepare for us the place of many mansions, New Jerusalem. Revelations chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. After that rapture, when he comes and takes us up there, look at verse 7, chapter 19. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen 
is the righteousness of the saints. So, who is this? Who is this bride of Christ at the marriage of the Lamb? Well, look, if you will, back in... Um, all right. I'm just going to quote it. Where he talks about, he says that we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. He says uh, that therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and, and, and be joined. And he said, and I speak of a great mystery concerning Christ and the church. Amen. So this is Christ and the church raptured in heaven at the marriage of the Lamb. And then look, look, look what comes next. After that marriage, look at verse 14. And the armies which what were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Amen. And what we just, we just got, we just got back in verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, white and clean. And this is a great mystery, but we talk about Christ and the church. So it is the church that is the bride of Christ. It is the church, the bride of Christ, that has been raptured and is in heaven right here at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then when Jesus Christ gets ready to come in power and glory at the second advent to finish his prophetic program with the nation of Israel and to fulfill all Old Testament prophecies to that nation, hey, that's our honeymoon. We're going with him. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Amen? And so now Christ comes back to finish his business with the nation of Israel. Look at Ezekiel chapter 37. See, this is, this is the resurrection of the nation of Israel, which was not a mystery, okay? The rapture of the body of Christ, he said, was a mystery, something not yet revealed. This is prophecy. This is the resurrection of the nation of Israel, which was clearly understood. Ezekiel chapter 37, starting verse 9. And he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. Remember that. The four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Fully and clearly prophesied, Israel would be resurrected out of their graves and brought into the land of Israel. Now go to Matthew chapter 24. You'll see where if you don't rightly divide and mush everything together, you'll get the wrong interpretation. Matthew chapter 24 is an equivalent passage with Luke chapter 21 and Mark chapter 13. So we'll just go for time's sake just go to Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, Christ says, 
Go to verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Right? What? Remember? On the white horse, with the armies in heaven, us with him. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a sound, great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from what? The four winds. Where we, we just read that. We just read that in, in Ezekiel chapter 37. See, this is the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 37. And who is who is this elect? Well, this elect here is uh, Isaiah 45 and 4, Israel, my elect. So here's Israel being gathered at the second coming of Christ and gathered where? He just, where he just told us, gathering them together to Jerusalem, back into the land. Amen. So, don't get this confused with the rapture of the body of Christ, because that was a mystery that had not yet been revealed. But this regathering of Israel, this resurrection of the house of Israel, as prophesied, in Ezekiel chapter 37, and is clearly taught by Jesus in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, that stuff was not a mystery. That was all, that was all Old Testament prophecy to the nation of Israel. So Christ comes and resurrects the nation of Israel, and guess what? All the Old Testament prophecies of that kingdom are fulfilled. Jesus Christ takes his seat on the throne of David in Jerusalem, and he rules and reigns for a thousand years. And the nation of Israel becomes that nation of priests, and all nations will come to see the Lord in Jerusalem. And that's for a thousand years. And where do we fit into that? Because remember, New Jerusalem is still in the heavenlies. And that's where we dwell. Where do we fit into that? All right. The world today is ruled by Satan. He is the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. Huh? He rules over spiritual wickedness in high, in high places, the prince and principalities and powers of this world. And you see that um, throughout the Old Testament, there is the prince of Persia. There is the king of Tyre. There is the prince of Tyre. And we see that nations of this earth are overruled by subordinates of the devil, demonic principalities and powers, powers of the air that rule over this world under Satan. Well, guess what? Satan is now bound. And we, as a heavenly people, we rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. We take the place of those demonic principalities and powers of the air. And we rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And that's what Christ was talking about. I'll make one Lord of ten cities, one of five cities. He that's faithful in much, he that's faithful in little. That's what he's talking about. We rule and reign with him. And here's what's important to make the distinction. Is that Israel just got resurrected, but we got raptured. And the body of Christ and Israel, listen, things that differ are not the same. And we actually get different bodies. Go back to the resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Start about verse 35. Here's what Paul says. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? 
and with what body do they come? Thou fool. Oh, such language, Paul. That's not very Christian-y of you. <laughs> hey, I was just uh, 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 on YouTube with some guy who his whole channel was about attacking the King James Bible and Bible believers. And I went on there and uh, uh, I I said a few I said a few things to him. I think I called him an uh, 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 an effeminate apostate Laodicean. Uh, I think I called him a liar. Uh, and you know, uh, they, they, they was like, Oh, how could you say that to a, another brother? <laughs> yeah, these folks just don't read their Bible too much. You come after the book and Bible believers. Listen, you might get talked to like John the Baptist and Jesus talked to the Pharisees, huh? Generation of serpents, thou fool, liars, amen, crooks, thieves, huh? Yeah, huh? look. Uh, uh, <laughs> how's that for Christ-like? So, yeah, people, people, I'll be, oh, be Christ-like. That doesn't mean be a feminine. It means telling the truth. Amen. And sometimes the truth is hard. And if you're a liar, you can call him a liar. Amen. If you're, if you're an effeminate Laodicean apostate, I can call you that too. Amen. That's just the truth. And we love you. But look, at, we're not going to let it, let you get away with, with attacking this book and attacking Bible believers and not say anything about it. Uh, I told him, I said, uh, 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 like, uh, like Dr. Ruckman would tell you, go blow it out your nose, Junior. <laughs> Amen. All right, going on. Okay, so we were at uh, different bodies. Verse 35. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Now, verse 37. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. Amen? So you're, you're planting the dead thing in the ground. Right? But God giveth it, verse 38, But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So now we're talking about, we're talking about coming up. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differ from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead. So in the resurrection of the dead, celestial means heavenly. Terrestrial means earthly. So he says, in the resurrection, there are celestial bodies. That's the body of Christ. We are suited and outfitted for life in the heavenlies. And then there are bodies terrestrial. That is the resurrection bodies of the nation of Israel, which are suited and outfitted for life on the earth. Amen? So, we, in the body of Christ, are just, we, have, we, get res, we get rapture bodies that are just like the celestial body that Jesus Christ rose in. But those here on earth and the nation of Israel are still operating under an Old Testament prophetic program, and they are fulfilling Old Testament prophecy here on the earth. And they have a resurrection body that doesn't have sickness and dis disease. And as the scripture says, if somebody died at a hundred, they would go, Oy vey, he was just a baby. Uh, so this is a renewed earth. It's the time of refreshing, uh, uh, restitution of all things. Times of refreshing that come from pr the presence of the Lord. Uh, much of the curse is removed from creation and from the earth. Not all of it. That's coming soon here. And uh, so... That's, that's what's going on there. The, the things that differ are not the same. Rightly dividing the nation of Israel, its, its destiny and the fulfillment of its prophecy from that of the church, the church, the body of Christ, which is Jew and Gentile together in one heavenly organism. Amen. Okay, so moving on, that's the millennium. A thousand year reign of Christ on earth, 
with the with the resurrected Israel ruling reigning over the nations on earth, and we as the principalities in the air ruling and reigning with Christ. And may I be so crass as to say, uh, we commute to work. Our dwelling place is in the heavenlies in New Jerusalem, but we work on earth. Amen. All right. So now the quick final rebellion comes. Gog and Magog is gathered. They come against they come against the saints in Jerusalem. And the Lord just smashes them out in one verse like that. And it's over with, right? So then, then we go to the white throne of judgment. Satan, false prophet, antichrist. They, they've been there a thousand years. But Satan gets thrown into the lake of fire. Him and all his angels. It's done. And God creates what? A new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And in this new heavens and the new earth, there is no more sin. There is no more death. There is no more devil. There are no more demons. This new heavens and new earth are absolutely perfect. And because it's perfect now, and because the earth is perfect now, something can happen. Look what happens. Revelation chapter 21. Oh, it gets beautiful here. Oh, this is... This is the future. This is the this is like I said, it's not hard to understand. It's just hard to believe. Amen. But God can't who cannot lie. You can you can take this to the bank. Amen. This is this 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 is gospel truth. Revelation chapter 21. What happens? Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared, what? As a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Amen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. So, New Jerusalem comes to earth. And look at verse 9 through 12. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the last seven plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto it. And, and, and he goes on and he says in verse 12, and had a, great, a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And names written thereon, and what are they? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So now, New Jerusalem, where we've been dwelling as the body of Christ, comes down to earth. And there's 12 gates. For who to come in? <laughs> For the 12, tribes of, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, hey, now the doors are open. God is dwelling with man on a perfect earth. The gates are open. Now Israel comes in and dwells with us in New Jerusalem, which is now on earth. And so when they say, let me show you the lamb's right, wife, New Jerusalem. Okay. Say, so, well, he's talking about a city, not a people. No, think about it like this. If I am, if I'm on your street and your house is there, right? And I say, who's that? And I point at your house. Somebody said, oh, that's the Joneses. 
Well, no, that's not the Joneses. That's the Joneses' house. So you, you, you see the, the wording there. So when I say uh, uh, that New Jerusalem, that's, that's the bride of Christ. Well, why is it the bride of Christ? Because the bride of Christ dwells there. Uh, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a, a prison reference with that. If I'm sitting down there on the tier and I'm looking at the cells, right? And the cells are numbered. And I, and I ask somebody, hey, who's 41? Oh, that's Hog Boy and Billy Bob. You know, oh, okay, okay. Well, who's over there? You know, who's 15? And they say, oh, well, that's Joe and Pimp Daddy. Oh, okay, okay. See, no, no, that's 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 their cell. But the cell is who lives there. Amen. And New Jerusalem is the the bride of Christ because the bride of Christ lives there. And we have been living there since the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ when he went to prepare a place for us. And now the church age is past. The millennium is past. We're in a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth only righteousness. There is no more sin. There is no more devil. And now New Jerusalem, where we've been for 3,000 years, comes to earth. And it truly is heaven on earth. And if I can coin a phrase, I would say, and they all lived happily ever after. Oh, hallelujah. What a God and what a Savior and what a book. Amen. I hope that was helpful to you. I love you. You know that. And uh, uh, we'll do another one real soon. Still have to finish the last two chapters of my Acts series, but uh, uh, I just thought I would throw a little bit more of an exciting one in here before I did that. So God bless you, and we'll see you next time.